I'm Elliot Forrest from WQXR with another artist check-in and today checking in with uh, one of the great guitar players on the planet, Sharon Isbon. Always good to see you. It's great to see you. Finally, Elliot. I know. Uh, you've got two new albums out. Doesn't surprise me. You've got great projects even during quarantine. Let's talk uh, about these new albums uh, one at a time. A beautiful new album and You've always experimented with different kinds of music, but uh, Strings for Peace, uh, I I'm guessing this kind of music is a was a little new for you to play? It was very new for me to play. Fortunately, when I was in college, I loved hearing Indian ragas and sitar, and that was my introduction at the time in live concerts. But I never imagined that I'd ever, ever be playing this music so what happened was a little over 10 years ago, I got a, an email from Amjad Ali Khan, who's the foremost Sarod player in India from six generations in his family of actually even developing the instrument. And the Sarod is a metal instrument. It's played without frets. So there's lots of different kinds of tones and timbres and pitches in between what we're aware of in Western music. It's played with a plectrum. And he contacted me because he wanted to create and forge some kind of collaboration. So what ended up happening was a beautiful friendship developed over 10 years. And it took this long for us to find a way to actually play together. It required somebody who could translate his imagination of sarod and guitar and arrangement of the two instruments together, who had a knowledge of playing jazz, of North Indian classical music, of classical guitar, of composition, of improvisation. That's a pretty heady set of requirements, but he found somebody who was studying with him when he was teaching as professor in residence, University of Indiana, Bloomington, in North Indian classical music. And the name of the fellow was Kyle Paul. So he, over a period of time, was able to notate these arrangements. And suddenly, one day in November of 2018, all of these ragas appeared in my inbox. And I listened and they were just so beautiful and moving. And I was just deeply touched by this. And I, I said to Amjad, this is gorgeous music. And he said, good, because we booked a tour for you to do with us in two months in India. I said, <laughs> what? <laughs> can't we wait a little longer? And they said, no, we booked the halls in Mumbai, Calcutta and Delhi, and we were able to get them consecutively. This is the time, let's just do it. I had to move mountains to make it possible, but the reason I did is that I had come to love Amjad, his family, his two sons, Ayan and Aman Ali Bangash, who are also virtuoso Sarad players and would be part of this whole project. I love the title, uh, Strings for Peace. Uh, in addition to great music making, is there, a, is there a deeper message that you and the players are sending out? Well, it was their title, and most of the titles that Amjad has created in his projects have the word peace in it, because it is so much a part of his philosophy and belief system that there can be harmony in the world between different cultures, different languages, different religions, and that we really are all one. So that title, Strings for Peace, he and his sons created a year ago. We had no idea this album would be released in the time that the world would be suffering from just a ghastly pandemic and so many people would be experiencing unimaginable hardship and that music would be needed at a time like this for comfort and healing more than ever. And when this came out in May of 2020, it really spoke and resonated on a very powerful level. The other album is Affinity, and uh, you've got, uh, it's all world premieres. It's all uh, new works. Uh, the, no one's ever heard these before. And you've got some great composers, including Tan Dunn and our mutual friend, Chris Brubeck. They were written for me. And in the case of Chris Brubeck, it was a commission by the Betsy Russell Foundation who offered to find a composer, have me find a composer that she could commission after hearing me play with orchestra. And 
Chris Bubik is, a, is somebody I've known for years, and we chose the Maryland Symphony Orchestra, Elizabeth Schulz, their conductor, because she has done so much of Chris's music, and it was actually, actually Elizabeth's idea to suggest Chris for this particular project. And the other composers on the album, again, it's, it's a, an embrace of world music, and you have the Cuban composer, Leo Brower. There's music from Venezuela by Antonio Lauro in a new arrangement for two guitars that's, that was done for, for me by a former student of mine, Colin Davin. And there's music from China with Tan Dunn, and it ends with the American Persian composer, Richard Danielpour, in a song cycle commissioned for me and Isabel Leonard, who premiered it with me. It was commissioned by Carnegie Hall and the Harris Theater Chicago. So Isabel sings, those songs with me on the album. You and I right now are chatting here in July of uh, 2020. Um, we don't have a vaccine. We don't know where we're gonna be back on stage at, at this point. I mean, I'm hoping maybe the middle of 21, maybe a little bit later. I, I know some performers are saying they're not all that disciplined and not really uh, haven't been practicing. Some have, I I've known you as being a fairly disciplined person are, are you are you keeping up your chops or are you waiting till you know when you're going to be back on stage again well the chop part is a little less disciplined than the rest of my life right now but i was asked to do a virtual concert for the colorado music festival i was going to be playing the Brubeck concerto there and that is one of the pieces on the affinity album and i really had to just return to the guitar and return to a level of playing and learn how to operate video and everything else that was involved in the process. But I love doing it because it really made me connect once more and know that I, that can still continue to be a very important part of my life and, and that it's worth keeping up those chops and that I love sharing music with people, whether they're listening in another virtual context or right there with me. Of course, I miss a live experience. There's nothing like that. And I, I, of course, hope, like we all do, that the world can heal and we can return to that. In the meantime, we have to be resourceful and creative about finding ways to bring music as a part of a healing process. I'll, I'll never forget playing at the 9-11 Memorial in New York City. Was, I was invited by Gil Shaham to join him and to play solos during the reading of the names in 2002. At, at the first time that the 40,000 family members and survivors gathered on, on those grounds. And during this reading of the names, Yo-Yo Ma and I and the Juilliard String Quartet and Gil each shared playing during that process. And, and I'll never forget just being struck by, this is really why I'm a musician, this is why I'm on the planet, to be part of the healing and to contribute something to that. And I feel that way now. I feel that there are so many people who are suffering that if I, in any way, through music, through recordings, through playing live, through talking about it, can help be part of that and offer some comfort, it's, it's making my life worthwhile. You're an inspiration. Uh, I knew I needed the pep talk. Uh, Sharon, has been always great to see you. The two new albums, Strings for Peace and Affinity, I wish you uh, all the best and and in great health. Thank you so much for being with me. It's always good. And thank you. you. And you know what? We can celebrate coming up soon the 100th anniversary of Dave Brubeck because his music is part of the Chris Brubeck Affinity Concerto. And it is so beautiful. He, Chris chose a, a tune called Autumn that he had played often with his father and put that in as the center part of the piece. So it's, it's really got the heart and soul of, of his father and the memorial to him in that and the homage that he pays to him. And that is surrounded, of course, by all the virtuosic Middle Eastern and jazz influenced elements. But it's such a beautiful piece, Affinity Concerto for Guitar and Orchestra. I can't wait for you all to hear that. Uh, Sharon, always good to see you. Thanks for doing that. Great to see you, Elliot. Thank you.